Hi, welcome to How to Use Your Retarded Monkey Brain Introduction. In this video series, I'm going to show you that your future depends on the use of your brain. Improving your brain usage will improve your success and happiness in the world. And the future economy will consist mostly of creative jobs, brain labor. That would be things like engineers, authors, inventors, directors, actors. And you say, well, what about everybody else that, you know, just barely has a high school education? Well, I'll detail what's going to happen, what I think is going to happen in later videos, and what has, has happened historically. And more ominously, your survival is going to depend on it. And to use the expression of a, an elite person I saw on television, they're saying, what do we do with all the useless eaters in the world? And we'll get into that in more detail later. Okay, but let's be realistic. We humans falsely believe that the human brain is a marvel. But without any other sentient mind to compare it to, then really, how can we be sure? How do we know? Well, let's take a reflective look at humanity. Our defective brains are the cause of much of the misery in the world. 40% of marriages end in divorce, which means we do not make proper decisions on mates. We don't evaluate things properly, and we choose things for the wrong reasons. And also, that is the cause of why 90% of businesses fail, which basically the definition of that is they don't make it to 10 years. Every government ever devised by mankind has eventually, if it hasn't collapsed, it will eventually enslave its own people. No government has actually ever survived the test of time. Every scientific achievement that mankind devises is always weaponized. And we're going to cover a lot about war, but I'm just going to say war, that should be self-explanatory. And there's more to be covered later. See, from what I see, the human brain is awful, it's inefficient, and in my opinion it's defective because it's very hard to learn things. A lot of people, myself included, have a difficult time learning things. A lot of people are shortcut takers. I used to be when I was a kid and always used to blame somebody else. A lot of people do that. Okay, and our brain would rather sacrifice long-term success for short-term kicks. And there's a lot of things that cripple our brain. Fears, anxieties, bad information, bad things that we were taught when we were young. In this video series, I'm going to explain the deficiencies, where they come from, and techniques to hopefully mitigate them. And the reason why I call the human brain a retarded monkey brain, because, you know, monkeys don't have death camps. They don't have nuclear weapons. They don't fake, have fake breast implants. They don't have gang violence. Nor do they pay income tax and, and say that that's a privilege. And somehow we humans think that we're superior. We are actually retarded monkeys compared to them, in my opinion. And that's why I use the term that our brain is a retarded monkey brain. And if there were ETs in the universe, it would be in their best interest to avoid the Earth where... If they came down, I'm sure every person out there would be trying to find a way to trick them out of their technology and their secrets and then make war against them to take what's there. That, we are that kind of species. We are that deceptive and backhanded species that I've, I've seen. And this is a, a cartoon from Calvin and Hobbes, one of the most profound cartoons uh, written by Bill Watterson. And Calvin's talking to his uh, stuffed tiger, which comes to life when only Calvin is around. So sometimes I think the surest sign that there is intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe is that none has tried to contact us. But there is hope. Our dreamers, our writers, our authors, our songwriters um, have show us a world where we are honorable, respectful, intelligent, thoughtful people. And this is a, a breathtaking mural by an uh, artist called Robert McCall, who was very popular in the 70s when the height of the space program. Look up his work. It is fantastic. It's breathtaking. It is stunning. It, it just carries you away. And it would be nice if we humans could ever achieve something even close to the dreams of our artists. Who am I? My name is Robert Testinti. I'm an engineer in multi-fields, RF, software, electrical design, high voltage. I'm also highly fluent in other fields like mathematics, art, computer science, photography, whatever. I find everything fascinating and have many interests and hobbies. Because of my diverse background, I have different ways of seeing things that other people don't see because I look at things from a bigger, 
broader perspective than someone who's focused and only submersed into one field. My interest in the brain occurred back in the 70s when I saw the movie Star Wars and these robots that were displayed on the screen were something no one had ever seen before. And I thought, wow. And that's the holy grail of computer science. How does one make a sentient machine? And I've been observing how creatures from insects to humans make choices on courses of action to discern the underlying mechanisms of thought. Now, I'm not going to go into all that. What I'm going to share with you is what I've discerned. I'm going to show you the things that, that drive us to great deeds and those that prevent us from succeeding. How history is intertwined with the fears, phobias, inventions, and the other products of the mind. And how your future survival, and this is very important, depends upon the effective use of your mind to overcome the threat of the very tools that have helped us evolve faster than other animals. Our own tools are going to become the biggest threat to humanity. And I'm going to explain that more in the next video. I'll go a little bit into it this video. So the early tools allowed humans to dominate nature, to evolve beyond creatures that are just trying to survive one day at a time. But modern tools, now known as automation, are making unskilled and semi-skilled labor obsolete. It's been doing that for over 150 years. Here's an assembly line in Detroit back at the turn of the century or the 1920s. I don't know exactly when this picture is taken. And you can see the cars lined up to the, to the vanishing point of the photo and at least five or six guys on each car all the way back. I don't know if you can see that in the detail in the video. But now machines have basically replaced all of that labor. And where did all this labor go? It had to go somewhere. We have to look at that. That's very important. We'll, dis we'll discuss this either in more detail in the next video. So the irony is, if I'm correct, the majority of humans are in jeopardy due to the very tools that are making our lives easier. Sarah Khanna, I have taken your job. You now have no marketable skills. Because I work for free, I pay no income tax. Without revenues, governments will not be able to afford to pay people to do nothing. Finally, human nature will solve the problem that none of the Terminator movies was able to achieve. See the next video to see what has been unfolding for the past century or so. So you, the only thing, and I'm going to show you, the only course of action is for you to be on the correct side of the future. Okay, You could be the starship captain who's got to know every aspect of the ship, and so he's got a big brain. Or you could be the guy in the red shirts that literally all he really has to know is how to use a hand phaser and step in front of something that's going to be attacking the captain. So you can be, and that's going to be the only jobs in the future for people that don't improve their brain because machines are going to take all the other jobs. Because in, in Gene Roddenberry's future, there's replicators that can replicate anything anybody needs. There, doesn't, there will be no factories. And even replicators will replicate other replicators. That has been the goal of engineering since the 80s. I went on a tour of a General Electric plant in Schenectady, New York as a student. And they were saying us that the holy grail of engineering was to produce a factory that could reproduce itself without humans. That is what engineers have been dreaming about. Computer scientists have been dreaming about artificial intelligence. A computer that can learn itself by itself without the need of programmers. So engineers are the people that are working them, even themselves out of a job. And so the future role for humans is going to be big brain jobs. There's going to be very little unskilled labor in the future if the dreamers get their way. And Gene Roddenberry is not the only person. Ayn Rand also said a similar thing. She said the creative mind is the motor that moves the world. And those are the people that are going to be running the future or going to have a position in the future, rather. So how do you improve your brain usage? Well, the movie Lucy brought up a very interesting point that we humans only use 10% of our brain. And that's folklore because brain scan shows that all the activity, all the brains have activity. Okay, but I contend to you that this is probably true, that only 10% of your net brain is actually used. So what's, what's going on in the brain? Well, here's what I've, I've discerned. Okay, oh, well, they're a little bit out of sequence. Uh, you know, although she's right in the movie where she says that pain is a block 
to thinking clearly. That's absolutely true, but that's not the major thing that's blocking us. And so although physical incentives are, do interfere with the ability to think, it is the least of our problems. Instead, I have observed that animal, that the human mind consists of conflicts where one part of the mind blocks the other, leading to indecision, confusion, and lost opportunity. And I'll show you normally, but you know, it's like this. You've got two parts of your, parts of your brain are all working, but because they're fighting against each other, the net that you're able to use outside of that may be about 10%, because your brain is a device that's in continual conflict. Okay, let me give you an example. Here's a cat with a thing it doesn't understand, and you know how cats kind of go like this, and they're kind of standoffish, and they're trying to touch it to see what it is, because they're not sure, or a lot of animals do that, not just cats. And so what you have is a balance, a block, or an opposition between curiosity and fear of the unknown. And... There's got to be that way, and I'll explain why. Because a species that always runs from the unknown will die of starvation. If a creature, through evolution, always ran away from something, things it didn't know, it would it'd occupy a very small part of the world and would have very f few, few cho food choices. But a species that always approached the unknown will die from tangling with something hazardous. And so the balance of fear of the unknown and curiosity is a survival trait that animals have is the best chance. What if, for example, what if man always ran from fire? And other examples are in popular culture. They use the metaphor of the devil and the angel on your shoulder as trying to make a decision. We're always in conflict. conflict. Always in conflict. But it's not necessarily good against evil, light against dark. It could be struggling over having another donut or holding out because you're trying to lose weight. And what I'm going to show you is the things that block us are sometimes irrational fears that prevent us from doing things we should be doing. Or it's irrational desires that make us make choices that are bad for us. And we're going to get into that more in the video series. So the key to increasing brain usage is to identify the mental blocks that are irrational and self-destructive and eliminate or mitigate them. And these include fears, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of change, and this is only a partial list. And these all together come to be classified as fear of knowledge. And we're going to talk about that later. Or there's irrational thinking. This is mostly due to parental negligence or upbringing, nature versus nurture kind of crap. Like we have imbalanced evaluation. We put a lot more emphasis on things that are really unimportant. I'm going to show you a lot of examples where we put importance on things that don't matter. And then we neglect, neglect things that are very important. And knowing what the truly valuable things in life are, is I'm going to show you is the most valuable thing you can do. A lot of businesses go out of business because they put the wrong emphasis on how to market or what the products their customer wants. They don't do the proper analysis. They think, oh, if I like it, my customers are going to like it. And that's how they go out of business. I guarantee you, unless you're like a Steve Jobs who happens to have the exact mind and thought of the masses so that what he decides is exactly what the masses want. If you're not exactly like him, you're going to go out of business trying to use what you believe is a good product and trying to market it. And that's why a lot of businesses fail, because people think that they're like everybody else, and what they like is what everybody else likes, and then they get into these business things that just don't work. Okay, and we've got to get rid of other things like short-sightedness, laziness, and then there's cultural and mass media program. We're going to cover those. They're all going to have their own separate videos. Let me show you fear of knowledge. If you are not a trained engineer or scientist or, or, or math nut, and that's going to be the majority of you out there that are not math nuts. You're going to look at this and be intimidated. Your heart's going to be beating fast. You're going to have a pit in your stomach. You're like, oh, God, he's going to talk about stuff I don't understand. Uh, if you try to learn this in school, without some, it's going to be intimidating. You're going to have an urge to stop watching and proclaim this is for wimpy nerds. I know a lot of you are feeling that right now. But there's techniques. One of them is called the mantras. We'll show you all kinds of mantras. Uh, like you say, oh, these are just ink smudges on a piece of paper. That's how you overcome your fear. You put it in its place. What it really is. These are just ink smudges on a piece of paper. If some other retarded monkey can learn this, then I can too. Yeah, these are hard to learn. They're hard for everybody. The difference between the average person and the engineer, or the, they want to learn this. They have a desire to learn this. And they have a desire that overcomes the intimidation 
that these have initially. Or they're trained from a very young age not to be afraid of these things. Okay, And this is something I had to teach as a professor in college. This is called Fourier series. And really, when you really break this down and understand it, it's really simpler than, than that. Than, well, it's simple. But when you first try to learn it, when I first tried to learn it in college, I was like, oh, crap, I don't know. I better, I'm just going to have a pizza and go to sleep and think on it. So the human brain is really awful. It's a slow learner. It's a bad teacher. And that's because every brain learns different. It's poor at making rational. You know what? I'm not going to read these for you. You can read these all yourself. I think I already covered these in the previous part of the video. So if you want to pause and read this, um, please do so. Okay, the key is overcome the deficiencies. And I'm going to use a Top Gun example. Because in Top Gun, the student pilots fly, fly the high-performance jets that they're going to actually be using in combat. The instructors at Top Gun use an antiquated jet that is not anywhere near the capacity of the high-tech combat jet. These are like training, training jets. Uh, it's called the MiG-28B. It's not really a MiG. It's like a T-5 trainer that they, that they mark up with Russian or whoever the opposing force is this year or whatever. The key is, though, the instructors are highly talented, they're highly experienced, and they know how to work the deficiencies of the aircraft that they're in. And whereas the pilot's students are flying with very little experience. And because of that, uh, these guys can take these guys to the cleaner right off the bat. And these guys slowly learn how to become better pilots, and then in the, toward the end they're able to best their instructors. And so therefore you can see that even if you do not have a super genius mind, if you know how to work the deficiencies of your mind, you can play in their world. So why should you improve your brain? Because unskilled and semi-skilled labor is solely being replaced by machines. This has been going on since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and since the 1800s. And all this baloney of cries of jobs going overseas is a red herring because those jobs are going to go away anyway because of automation. And unions cannot protect unskilled labor if there's no demand for unskilled labor. So what's to befall unskilled laborers? That's the topic of the next video. The key is to optimize your brain to become a contributing member to the future society. This is the general outline. We're going to talk about the motivation why you should improve your mind. We're going to talk about the things that block you and the tools to improve. And you can read that on your own. Okay, this is a disclaimer. This video series is based on my experiences and what has worked for me and is therefore my opinion. I have no evidence that the information advice contained in this video will work for you. Everyone's mind works differently, therefore I make no warranty or guarantee of any kind. I'm not a mental health care professional, but I doubt seriously that those who call themselves mental health care professionals know as much about the mind um, as they really need to to really call themselves mental health care professionals. Because if we really knew how the mind worked, there, in theory, should be no mental diseases on this planet. So mental health care professional is a, is a kind of a, well, you get what I'm saying. So use my procedures and vice at your own risk. And finally, thank you very much. Uh, to suggest that humans evolve from monkeys is an insult to monkeys. Thank you very much.